Big Sky Ski Resort in Montana boasts the biggest skiing in America. The resort is centered around Lone Mountain with riding on 300 degrees of its face. No other resort drops riders into such exposed big mountain terrain without a guide. The resort features gnarly triple black diamond runs, including the big cool. <laughs> high risk, high reward challenges are all around. Beginner and intermediate riders are not left out though, and half of the terrain of this mega resort are groomers and easy riding. With 5,850 total acres, that makes the beginner and intermediate terrain larger than most other ski resorts. We eyed up the advanced and expert portion, ready to tackle the biggest inbound steeps we've ever faced. It's massive. This is the tippy top of the resort, which you can barely see through the cloud. You can ride 300 degrees around that mountain off so many different types of slopes and terrain and pitches, and there's really something for everybody. Big Sky Ski Resort is located an hour drive south of Bozeman International Airport, 10 minutes up the road from the small town of Big Sky. We visited as part of a road trip from Jackson Hole using our Icon Passes. The town of Big Sky and the main base area are rapidly expanding with shops, restaurants, and lodging, but don't expect a vintage ski town. Up at the ski resort, the base area has free parking with open-air trailer shuttles to the lifts. The on-mountain infrastructure has grown rapidly, but the base area and lodging options are somewhat limited. There are a couple hotels and the main Vista Hall. Inside are shops and restaurants serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The Hungry Moose had a decent breakfast burrito, and be sure to try a Yeti gourmet hot dog. There are three main areas of Big Sky. The first area from Mountain Village covers Ansite Mountain and the east face of Lone Peak. Ansite has easy groomers off the backside and long intermediate runs and challenging glades on the front. The east face of Lone Mountain features easy to advance cruisers and the terrain parks. It's easy to hop on Powder Seeker to access the bowl as well. Next is Moonlight Basin on the north side of Lone Peak. Take Challenger or Iron Horse to Lone Tree and ride the long intermediate runs to Madison Base Area. At the top is the extreme Headwaters Hike 2 terrain. Drop back into Moonlight or drop the other side into the bowl. The third area is Lone Peak. Take Powder Seeker to the tram to reach the very top catching a glimpse of the big couloir along the way. From the top, ride the east face down to Shedhorn or Liberty Bowl on the south face to Dakota. It's a long traverse around the mountain back to the base area. Beginners and intermediate riders can start on Andesite Mountain via Ram Charger Lift. There are several easy green runs to explore on the back side under the Southern Comfort High Speed Lift or further to the Sacagawea Lift. Even for experts, this area had enchanting pine forests for carving glades between the easy runs. On the other side of Andesite are long, wide open blue cruisers down to Thunderwolf. This was a fun area to explore with a decent slope. Further over was Lone Moose Chair on Flatiron Mountain with steeper advanced runs for really ripping. Overall, Andesite area had great views of Lone Mountain with cruiser groomers for warming up the legs and an option to dive into challenging glades. The other area from the base for beginners and intermediate riders is up Swift Current on the east side of Lone Mountain. There are plenty of interesting features in this area like Harbor's natural halfpipe, wide open cruisers, well-spaced glades, and rolling terrain. This area also has the main terrain parks. There are a couple small features in Explorer Park, medium features in the cache, and larger jumps and rails in Swifty Park. The terrain parks are decent, but they didn't seem to be a main attraction. At the top of Swift, many riders will aim for Powder Seeker Lift in the bowl area. Another heated seat blue bubble, this lift brings riders above treeline into a wide open bowl between two ridgelines of Lone Peak. Big Sky has become popular, which means it has become very crowded. Even with the high capacity, high speed lifts, expect long lift lines at choke points, especially from the base area, Powder Seeker, and the tram. At the bottom of the bowl, stop by Uncle Dan's Cookie Shack to refuel on the fly with a warm cookie and panini. The next area to explore is Moonlight Basin. From the top of Swift or Powder Seeker, right around the north side of Lone Mountain. There are wide open runs that lead down through the Forbidden Forest to the Challenger Lift. Try to spot the old gondola cabin in the woods. There is plenty to explore under Challenger along the way, which starts to get above treeline. Big Sky is known for rocky terrain that can gouge to the core of your board or skis, so watch out. What looks like covered snow can quickly turn into a pointy shale field. Fell down the rock face. Tore a big hole in my elbow. Lovely. The Moonlight Basin area was a separate ski resort acquired by Big Sky in 2013. Lone Tree Lift brings riders over Lookout Ridge into Horseshoe Bowl. This area was less steep than we expected. There are several long intermediate runs as well as advanced runs that filter through the trees. The wider spaced glades off Lookout Ridge were the best part. At the bottom is the Madison Base area and a small to medium terrain park with a few quick hits. The only way out of the Moonlight area is on the Six Shooter Lift. At the top of Moonlight is the Headwaters Hike 2 terrain. This is where many will look to earn their turns. At the top is a knife ridge 
one side looking over into the bowl, along the pinnacles and A to Z chutes, the other side looking down into Stillwater Bowl. There are handy ropes to hold along the way, and we recommend putting your board on your backpack to free your hands to use them. Watch where the wind is blowing and drop to the sheltered side to enjoy wind-deposited freshies and chalky lines days after a storm. We opted for the double black parachute run at the end of the hike down toward the tram. The top of Lone Mountain is where most expert riders will want to go. The current tram holds 15 people and to limit the formerly two to three hour wait, the resort now charges up to $100 extra to ride the tram. Icon pass holders pay as well. The resort is currently building a new high capacity tram to alleviate this issue. The summit of Lone Peak is small and it will be a challenge to hold more people in the future. At the top is an observation deck, which will one day be an indoor glass floor experience. Keep in mind the wind direction at the top as well. After weaving through the wooden snow fences that help hold the snow to the top, we dropped into Marks. There were fresh turns all the way down the perfect slope. It was an absolute dream floating down the mountain looking at the Spanish peaks of the Madison mountain range in the distance. The top is often encased in clouds which can lead to vertigo, so choose your day to hit the top carefully. The south side rides down a similar pitch through Liberty Bowl. We didn't get to that area as the Dakota lift wasn't operating. Like it's just steep enough that it kind of scares you, but you can get your turns in. <laughs> Mark sled down to the Shedhorn lift area where there's a grill, bathrooms, and more gladed terrain. You can traverse to Shedhorn and Dakota without going all the way to the top of Lone Mountain. To get back around the mountain, take the long duck walk traverse. The big couloir is the ultimate challenge at Big Sky. It's the closest thing to heli skiing, but inbounds right off the tram. First, check in with Ski Patrol to get a timed entry. There are only a few spots each day. Then sign the waiver and show your avalanche gear. Since the tram wait time was over two hours, we just waited another two hours at the top of the mountain for our time slot. Yes, a five hour wait for one run. Then we went through the gate down to the entrance. You must ride as a pair and split it into two sections. One rode down to the dog leg and paused before the other followed. Sometimes there's a rocky section in the middle called the cheese grater, but luckily that was filled in with snow. The couloir is up to a 50 degree pitch in some sections, and one wrong turn could send you cartwheeling all the way down the 1400 foot leg burner. The snow was prime when we rode though, and we had good visibility. You can traverse into the little couloir part way down, or just ride out the bottom hollering all the way. The big is by far the craziest line we've ever ridden. We did it! Woo! I put a patch on my elbow, fixed my jacket, good times. Thanks for joining us here at Big Sky, exploring all the different areas. Jeff and Jennifer with Snowboard Traveler. We'll see you at the next mountain.